Right now, moving on on the WHS 1119, we're following breaking news tonight out of the Russell neighborhood of West Louisville, where a man has been shot and killed. An LMPD spokesperson telling us it happened just before 9 tonight at 26 and Madison Streets. When officers got there, they found the man who had been shot. He was taken to U of L Hospital, where he died not long after arriving. Right now, as you can see, detectives are on the scene. They are canvassing the area, trying to find witnesses. Anyone who can help detectives can always call the anonymous tip line. That number is 574 LMPD. And a man in Elizabethtown is dead after police say he was hit by a train. Elizabethtown police say officers located 64 year old John Duncan at the railroad crossing on East Dixie Avenue at about 1:30 this afternoon. He died at the scene. The coroner's office, police and the CSX railroad company are handling this investigation. All new since six tonight on the night team. It was a close vote by the Hillview City Council tonight, but neighbors are elated. A controversial plan by a locally owned concrete company to expand had neighbors raising their health concerns. WHS 1119's Connor Steffen reports why tonight's decision in Bullitt County shocked everybody. This is for the council meeting. Concern. This was in your backyard. You would not let it happen. After concern. We are asking you to not only listen to us, but to hear us. Hillview City Council fielded dozens during this public hearing over a company's plan to expand. We've never been reassured. Our car feel like he's being robbed, but now she's going to have to get checked. She looked around for about a piece of land. Though it was one concrete concern or concrete company that brought these Hillview homeowners here. The fight over a proposed city ordinance allowing family-owned business SNS Concrete to rezone nearly 10 acres of its light industrial land as heavy industrial, allowing the site large-scale undertakings and heavy industrial equipment. It's raised health concerns for neighbors living just feet from it. Our neighborhood is not an urban area and our neighborhood is not suitable for industrial purposes. Steve has done everything that he can and will continue to do to make sure that he's in compliance health-wise with all the departments. Another issue, noise. One neighbors say has been an ongoing disruptor for months now. It's just like sticking their finger in your eye. SNS concrete owner Steve Smith said his workers have been told to be mindful of residents while working. Though he also admits to having used a rock crusher on the site for about six months after buying the property in 2022. An attorney for the company says that Smith, who is a fourth generation business owner, wasn't aware he needed a different zoning permit to operate the rock crusher at the time. She says when he found out, he immediately stopped using the equipment. That equipment will sit idle a bit longer now after this vote. Three votes for, three against. We'll go back to the planning and zoning commission. Hillview City Council holding an expansion to property or operations for now. It is so exciting because we just, it's from the heart. A vote that came as a surprise to these neighbors. Some of the council members too, uh, they voted yes. If they lived in my place, I'm not a betting person, but I still, mm -hmm. every nickel I got, they would not want to live there. Neighbors say they respect Smith and his business, but prefers operations move elsewhere. In a statement, the company's attorney said it's working on the next steps for SNS Concrete at this time. In Hillview, Connor Steffen, the WHAS 1119, on your side. And it is not over yet. The issue of rezoning will now head to the Bullitt County Planning and Zoning Commission, and they will review tonight's decision. Also new tonight here on the 19, changes could be on the way for people in Louisville who run Airbnbs and other short-term rentals. Tonight, the local planning commission considered more than a dozen recommended changes to the regulations. They include restricting occupancy in the Airbnbs to 12 adults, and even fewer if the Board of Zoning Adjustment wants to add further restrictions. Owners would also be required to live at a residence for at least six months before submitting an application and the annual registration fee would increase to $250. That's up from $100 right now. The recommendations come after concerns about short-term rentals in Louisville ruining the feel of community in some neighborhoods. Our neighborhood is on the brink of becoming all short-term rentals with many blocks in our neighborhood containing two to four STRs and some are right next door to each other. Many Airbnb operators spoke against the proposal at tonight's meeting. They argue that a handful of owners are making everyone else look bad. And I'm here to support other Airbnb owners that are like me. I'm trying to supplement my income. I'm trying to preserve, maintain, protect, and pay for the historic property that I own. Uh, with rising taxes 
insurance, utilities, and maintenance costs. The struggle is real every day. The Louisville Planning Commission sent the recommendations to the Metro Council with some slight adjustments. The Louisville Metro Council will ultimately have to approve any regulation changes. They have the final say. The group Friends of Public Art say it's going to fight a judge's ruling late today, preventing the return of the John B. Castleman statue to Cherokee Triangle. Today, Judge Jennifer Bryant Wilcox denied the group's motion to reinstall the statue. The request came after the Kentucky Supreme Court gave this group a victory, recently finding a conflict of interest in the original decision to remove the statue. Friends of Public Art spokesperson Steve Weiser talked to us tonight about this new ruling. We again feel that they're uh, improperly uh, proceeding with this decision. So um, we think that they're not legally based and we'll uh, challenge that up to the Supreme Court if it takes it again. He went ahead and told us as well they do plan to file some kind of appeal. The statue was repeatedly vandalized in 2020 because of Castleman's ties to the Confederacy. He later fought for the Union. Wiser and friends of public art argue that Castleman worked to keep the parks integrated in Louisville and have proposed adding a memorial to the Cherokee Triangle spot to recognize those who fought parks for the who fought park segregation. Louisville Mayor Craig Greenberg's office has said repeatedly it has no plans to place the statue back in its original location. It currently is in an outdoor storage lot owned by Metro government. Friends, family and students saying goodbye today to Oldham County teacher Max Emerson. Emerson was shot and killed on a Washington DC college campus while he was there for a conference. This afternoon, people lined the halls at Southeast Christian Church Crestwood campus ahead of the funeral service. Tables were also set up where people could share their memories of the well-known teacher. Washington, D.C. police have charged a 22-year-old man with Emerson's murder. A popular pavilion in southwest Jefferson County used for everything from community gatherings to weddings is considered a loss after a morning fire. Take a look. This is the aftermath now with a fire at the Farnsley Mormon Landing Pavilion on the Ohio River. PRP firefighters responded to the flames at about 9.20 this morning. One person was treated for smoke inhalation. They believe a nearby car with an electrical malfunction caught fire and it spread to the pavilion. And this is what it looked like this morning just after 9 o'clock when firefighters arrived. You can see the flames are everywhere in this video recorded by PRP firefighters. Firefighters say they do not believe the fire was set deliberately. And in a Facebook post, Riverside, the Farnsley Mormon Landing, wrote that they are heartbroken to lose the David Armstrong Pavilion, but they are so grateful that nobody was hurt. On strike, Louisville coffee employees, baristas from two coffee chains, joined forces today in their fight for a new contract. No contract! No coffee! No contract! No coffee! Baristas from locally owned Sunnergoss and Starbucks went on strike at the Sunnergoss on 5th Street in downtown Louisville. They are calling for a raise and a higher quality of life. Workers called out the companies in the middle of union contract negotiations. We haven't gotten very far in the process um, and it, we've been met with a lot of resistance and unwillingness to negotiate. We we contacted both companies earlier today. Sunnergoss declined to comment, but Starbucks sent us a statement saying in part, quote, Starbucks is committed to progress negotiations to progress negotiations toward a first contract where union representatives have approached contract bargaining with professionalism. It goes on to say that union reps have, quote, consistently failed to show up for our partners despite the repeated claims and escalating publicity stunts. All new on the WHS 1119, Churchill Downs is preparing for their September and fall racing meets. Tickets are now on sale for Churchill's September meet. Now the tickets posted online right now say the location will be at Churchill Downs. We asked Churchill Downs tonight if they are moving the races back to Louisville for September and the fall. They told us they will have an announcement in the coming weeks. The spring meet was moved to Ellis Park in Western Kentucky following 12 horse deaths at the Churchill Downs track since mid-April. Churchill Downs also announced new safety initiatives and the Horse Racing Integrity and Safety Authority launched an investigation. That final report is expected to be released soon. By the way, the Kentucky Horse Racing Commission has released the necropsy results from two more of those horses that died at Churchill Downs. Kimberly Dream suffered an injury to her left front leg on May 27th and was euthanized. The veterinarian found that the seven-year-old mare's health was consistent with her age, but noted she was the oldest in the field that day, was racing at a higher level than she had previously. No prohibited substances were discovered in the drug test and no other factors were listed. 
Now, lost in limbo was euthanized the day before after also hurting his leg in a fall during the race. The gelding unseated his rider in the post parade, but the veterinarian at the track cleared him to race. No prohibited substances were found in the drug test. The veterinarian writes the horse's back hoof may have come up and hit the front foot, causing the injury. A group of mothers say they're outraged after their children's burial sites were left in disarray at a Louisville cemetery. It happened last Friday at the Green Meadow Cemetery off Shanks Lane in southwest Louisville. The group of moms say crews trashed their belongings and did not notify them. I was literally in tears. She had a fence around it. Her father left her some shoes. Her sister, she put a little, little flower pot. It's like a solar flower pot that's gone. I came out here Friday. I wasn't able to speak to anyone. Came back out here Saturday, the gates were locked. Came back out here Sunday, again was not able to speak to anyone. Once I released a press conference, came out here today, I was able to speak to someone. Graveside manager Terry Watkins also told us his team threw away items last week to mow the area. According to their rules created in 2017, Flowers and decorations must be kept off the ground during mowing season. So I, I want to apologize to the families, but it's a myth if you think we do not care. That's not true. Moving forward, he says the gravesite will have signs and a list of rules available for people with loved ones buried in the Green Meadows Cemetery.